How's it going guys? Thank you for watching. For this video, I wanna explain a little bit my strategy for how I use Robinhood. Now, before I get started, I wanna remind you that I'm not a professional investor. I'm just getting started. So please take everything that I say with a grain of salt. This is not financial advice. This is just how I'm investing my money using Robinhood. So let's get started. All right, so first let me bring up the Robinhood app. So this is the day after the walkthrough video. Yesterday, the day ended with like a negative 500 and something today kind of went down and up it's still an after hour trading but right now it looks like it's a plus 70 some bucks uh, so it's not a great day but it's better than a red day let me get these notifications out of the way so as I mentioned on my last video uh, initially I did a heavy research on each company which is called the fundamental investing when you uh, you basically invest in companies that you're familiar with companies that maybe you use that's what Warren Buffett uses so if he understands the business if he knows the business uh, then he'll invest in it he'll buy some of the company so that's how I started uh, it's very time-consuming I started doing that with Scott's trade but I was kind of put off by the fact that every time that I bought or sold I was paying seven dollars per transaction uh, that's when I discovered Robinhood in the beginning my strategy with Robinhood was to do a little bit of fundamental and a little bit of technical uh, analysis and so technical analysis is basically when you're using the graph or the history of the price of that company to determine whether you know it's going to go up or it's going to go down it's more psychology than actual research on the company and so if i go down to history go down to orders and all the way down to the first uh, shares that i bought you see that i was buying uh, oil companies uh, you know for eleven dollars and that's just because the price of oil was going up back then I bought some shares of Ross and I was it was actually doing pretty good until it started going down so in the beginning I was basically just going uh, with a little bit of fundamental and a little bit of technical analysis um, I did okay and after I sold those after you know, testing the market for a little bit I started doing some penny stocks and uh, the penny stocks, basically, I was just buying anything under five bucks. It wasn't a great strategy because I was uh, stressed out all the time trying to wake up early to check the market and stay up at three or four o'clock in the morning. And it was just too much. So eventually, I came down to what I do now, which is pretty much technical analysis. I looked at companies that were on an uptrend that were between $5 and $20. And so all these companies right here uh, fit that description. At the time, using the margin account with Robinhood, I actually had access to about 30,000 total uh, and I bought basically 30 companies. So if you look at the companies that I bought, the worst stock that I bought was this RS, uh, SRT, uh, which is StarTech. And if we go down to the description, uh, engages in the provision of business processes, outsourcing, blah, 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 right? I bought it in July 18th of last year at 12.56. If I go to the to the graph, July, right around there. So you can see that I bought right at the top and then it just came down, it rebounded a little bit and it's just been going down ever since. And so uh, my strategy for these is I buy those stocks, I hold them for a year and the ones that are doing terrible, I sell them and then I convert those to new stocks with the same criteria. So it's been a year, so I'm getting ready to sell these. If you look at my one year graph, you can see that, uh, for example, here's the bottom and then it will peak and that's called a ceiling and then it will drop down. That's, I think that's the, called the support and it would hit again, same, approximately the same ceiling. It will come down to approximately the same support. And then as soon as it crossed that, it just explodes. And so that just has to do with people that, you know, they buy here and they think, oh, it, cannot, it can't really go up that much more. So it drops back down. They're like, okay, this seems about a good time to buy. And so they buy and it goes up again and it goes down. And then once it hits right here, people are like, okay, it's going to keep going. This is it. And so everybody starts buying until they feel uncomfortable and they start selling again. And so it does, it's just basically repeats like that. So you see a ceiling here, support, ceiling, support. And then I'm just waiting for this breakout as soon as it breaks down so that it looks something like this right here. 
As soon as it breaks down, then I'm gonna start selling all these bad uh, stocks. So out of 31 uh, stocks, 16 are no good and uh, 15 are good. So I'm gonna sell those 16 and then I have this on the watch list that I'm getting ready to buy to replace the ones that went bad. So my hypothesis is that if out of 30 companies that I bought, half of them were good and half of them were bad, then once I sell those bad ones, then half of those are gonna be good and half of the, uh, the other half are gonna be bad. So that'll leave me with theoretically three fourths of good companies. Now, nothing says that those good companies aren't gonna go bad. So for a good example is this AXGN, which is actually at, about it at 1635. And within the last year it was going up, it was going up, it hit almost 200% for me, and then it dropped back down and I just keep dropping. Now, I'm gonna keep it, uh, that's just because that's the strategy that I'm use, that I'm gonna use, but I could be completely wrong and I'll keep it until it hits negative and then it'll become, it'll, it'll go from a good stock to a bad stock. And so anyways, I'm not saying that that's the best way to do it. I'm, I'm just saying that's how I'm gonna do it. That's why I'm telling you this is just information. This is not advice. So if we go back to the list, obviously all these that are, you know, in the 40s and 20% 20, uh, 20 uh, loss are gonna be the first to go. Uh, so I'll sell those and then I'm going to consider these right here. They're on the on the 52 week high. Uh, and obviously this one right here just started dropping. And just a really quick point that I want to make. If we go back to like the worst uh, stock that I have, I lost about 48% of it, which is $483. But that's only 1.8% of the entire portfolio. So because I invested $1,000 in 30 different stocks, then the most that I would lose would be, you know, let's say $1,000 if that company goes bankrupt, which is not good to lose, but it's also better than losing 10,000 or 20,000. Uh, so that's part of my strategy right there. Now, some of these aren't gonna be as easy to determine whether you whether I should sell them or not. So if we look at PFN, I bought that one at 1058. Right now it's sitting at 1048. In the last five years, it's just been going up, right? So even though I'm negative on it now, it looks like it's just been going up. I bought it in July, so July is right here. Now, it took me a while to realize that I bought it at 1055 in July, even though it shows 968, and that's just what happens when you do a market buy. When I bought it, if I chose market price, then what happens is some people will hike up the price and within one or two days, it would go up or down a dollar. And so that's what happened with this one, but it keeps moving up. On top of that, if I go down here, even though I'm losing $6.64 a total return, if I go down to the history, right, you can see that I made that much in just dividends. 13 and one more coming up almost 14 payments of $7.60. So technically, I'm actually making money on this one, uh, even though it shows here that I'm negative. Okay, so I don't know if that made sense, but like I said, some of these aren't gonna be as easy as you think uh, to decide whether to sell or not, uh, but definitely these up here on the top uh, have to go. Now, one thing that Robinhood doesn't really show is what's open. It shows the portfolio amount, but it doesn't tell me if I sell all the all of the stocks, if I'm gonna be on the up, on the down, or if I'm gonna break even. So to have a better idea, uh, what I have to do is I actually have to use this other app, investing.com, and then I have a portfolio set up on here so that anytime I buy something with Robinhood, I put it on this portfolio, and then every time I sell it, I also put it on there. And so I can I can see that even though my portfolio is actually worth $40,500, um, that's including the Robinhood gold, the amount that I'm borrowing for Robinhood. Now, if I was to hit the open tab here and then arrange it by lowest to high, uh, you can see that again, it shows me the worst uh, stocks first. 
So on the worst, there, you know, I'm losing about five hundred something uh, because you know I bought a thousand dollars worth and it's down to four hundred something. But on the best, I bought a thousand dollars worth and now it's up one thousand four hundred on it. Uh, and then the next one is 1,500. So my worst stocks were actually not so bad that you know it destroys my good stocks. And so uh, a better way to explain it is all the money that I put in the market, if I sell it all right now, my profit is gonna be $7,121. And I would end up paying taxes on that. And because I've been holding it for more than a year, then it's only 15%, where if I was doing penny stocks and I was selling them within a year, then that would be a 35% tax on any gains. So anyways, just to recap, uh, my strategy is I buy companies that are on the uptrend, maybe on the 52 week high, that are within five and $20. I only buy about a thousand dollars worth of stocks. I hold it for at least a year, then I start selling the ones that didn't do well, then I start buying new companies with the similar criteria. And so that's been working for me so far. I'm up 55% on the two years, two and a half years that I've been investing. Again, this is not financial advice, this is just how I'm doing it. Hopefully that made sense. For all I know, it could be a terrible strategy that might cause me to lose all the money, but for now it's working, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Hopefully all this makes sense, but if it didn't, please leave any questions or comments below, and if there's enough questions, maybe I'll do another video. I'll make sure I keep updating it as I buy and sell stocks as the market goes up and down, and uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching, guys. Remember, I'm on a mission to retire early and travel the world with my family, so on top of my weekly vlogs, I'm also gonna put videos on how I plan to generate money on the road, how I save money, how I become a minimalist, and anything that helps me reach that goal of early retirement. Uh, if that's something that interests you, please subscribe to this channel. Click right here to see the latest upload. Click here to see videos that relate to this video right here. Don't forget to hit the little bell so you can get notifications for whenever I upload new videos. And also, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.